I just had a delightful conversation with Amy DeBent. She's a fellow quilter who is also a YouTuber. I'll put a link to her channel in the description box below. In our conversation, Amy tells us about her quilting history and her YouTube channel. She gives us specifics about how many quilts she works on at one time and what inspires her to start a new quilt. Then we dive even deeper to talk about how serendipity affects her quilting. We talk about the quilting community, time efficiency, and how she feels about placing quilts into specific categories. It was a delightful conversation and I hope you sit back and relax and enjoy the conversation with us. Hello everyone, this is Shalina. Welcome to my channel, Quilt and Color, where I talk about all things related to art. Hi, welcome to Quilt Hi. and Color. My name is Shalina. Today we have Amy from Amy Dement. Is that how you pronounce that? Yes. Okay. She's a fellow quilter and I thought I'd introduce you to her. So Amy, tell me your quilting story. How did you get started? What kinds of quilts do you make? I make all kinds of quilts. Um, I got started a lot of years ago by uh, PBS, you know, Eleanor Burns. And I mean, we're talking before Fonz and Porter and right. before Alex Anderson, um, but Eleanor Burns and um, Kay England. And I would come home after school and just suck up all the information you know that I could find my mom loved quilts she didn't sew she would hand sew she was five feet tall so everything had to be hemmed she beautiful hand stitcher but not mm -hmm. like a hobby stitcher at all and so I came to it you know just by that but she loved quilts you know I grew up in the south and quilts are everywhere they're part of there's, you know, so integrated with our heritage. Okay. And so it's, they're everywhere. And I loved, you know, they were always around and I loved doing it and knew that there was something special. And then mm. when I found Eleanor Burns and her, just her joy is so infectious. Yes, it that, is. <laughs> you know, I, I, I fell in love. So, you know, I've done that off and on. It's been, oh, over 30 years now. So um Same. but you know came back to it with the real vengeance I don't know about 15 years ago and okay. just haven't haven't stopped and I right. make all kinds of quilts I'm I'm not you know people ask you know for when the modern quilt guild first came into sort of the co concept of it mm -hmm. it there was this whole us versus them modern right. or traditional you know that went around I'm like wow people got too much free time but um, <laughs> <laughs> but so I'm not I'm not a modern quilter I'm not a traditional quilter I'm a you know capital Q quilter like capital L literature um yes. you know I, I want to do stuff that sort of embodies it all and takes reference from everything around me and is lasting, you know, sort of, you know, out of time, I guess. Not not like, oh, well, you made that in, I can tell you made that influenced by this. Or, you know, I think the more tools we have in our toolbox, the better we are at anything we do. So exactly how I, I do things that made. I don't know if that made any sense. I, I, Absolutely. Like I got lost in the middle there. <laughs> no, you're great. I mix and match all concepts all the time, too. Um, did you do any other kind of sewing before you started quilting? I've done sewing, um, some garment sewing, not a lot. When my um, when Anna was small, I did a lot of sewing for the for the kids. But, um you know, some home deck along the way, curtains, because I was, you know, broke and that's what you did. <laughs> um, but I've done, I still do knitting and spinning and crochet and weaving and wow. wool applique and embroidery. Basically, if it's fiber, I've got my hands in it. Right. So that I did paper fun. crafts for a while, but haven't done that in a long time. So. Mm -hmm. Um, can you tell me about your YouTube channel? How uh, long have you been producing the videos? I started on August 21st of this year. And that's the first time you did any videos? Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. 
That's amazing. I, your videos are always such high quality and the lighting is always wonderful and your personality is awesome. So, and you're so funny. So it's like, I thought that you had some other experience before you, before you started this channel. No, I've done a lot of um, like teaching and, you know, in front of the guild and, you know, speaking in front of a room. So Sitting in, sit, sitting in my room by myself, which let me tell you, is a weird job. What do you do? Uh, I sit in my room by myself and talk to myself all day. <laughs> it's a weird job. <laughs> but, you know, I, um, but I studied, I studied like the YouTube machine, you know, you know, it's, it's a, you, you got to play by their rules and their game. And I had a really good mentor that gave me some good advice about lighting and titles and, you know, just, you know, she's been doing it five years. So I'm, um, and in a different, in a different genre industry altogether, but she gave me a lot of really good advice about here's what you want to look for. And here are the things that are the most important and then improve something every, every time and right. you'll be fine. So, but I watched for years, I watched a lot of really bad YouTube and mm -hmm. not, like not, not necessarily quilting, like, but all over. Cause I was like, okay, what are the things about this that I want to avoid? So right. yeah, I studied, I studied and thought about it for a long time before I actually turned on the camera. So, wow. um, it's, it's, um, Hannah asked me what she goes, okay, what's stopping you? Why aren't you turning on the camera? I said, um, abject fear <laughs> of all the things I don't know. She's like, there's right. always going to be all the things you don't know. Turn on the camera and you'll learn. Right. And I, and, it, and it's, man, the learning curve feels like a vertical line sometimes, but, yeah. um, but I'm having a good time. So it is fun. It is challenging, but it is fun to do that. Um, let's see. How many quilts do you have going at one time? Oh, that depends on the day. Um, right now, I think I have, I counted, I think I have eight open projects, and, um, which is bothering me. <laughs> I'm trying to get them all closed up and finished by the end of the year because some of them have been like in the closet. And I'm like, I'm going to finish that before the end of the year for two years. <laughs> and I it's you know usually I'm like well you know it'll get done when it gets done but right now I'm like no I need to get some of these tabs closed <laughs> so that mm -hmm. I can get them out of my brain <laughs> um so, and and off of my off of my radar so right, right now I've got I think I've got about eight and a lot of it's just ready for the long arm and it's just a matter of getting it over there and getting it done so how long have you had your long arm? I got my long arm in, I guess maybe about five years. I got it well before the pandemic. So 2017, 2018, somewhere in there. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was trying to challenge myself not to have so many projects going at a time. And I have, you know, well, you got to finish a quilt for every quilt that you start, that sort of thing. And no, I, I can't, none of them work. I always promise that in January, like, okay, I'm going to do it this year. And then at the end of the year, I'm like, oh, nope, I started too many. <laughs> so this year I've decided that I'm just going to finish more than I start. So at least I'll get at least one more quilt done instead of having, you know, this one quilt. That's all I'm asking for. And even that's going to be a challenge this year. You know, uh, you know, people, I like to count things. Uh -huh. um, it's just part of, you know, being raised by a civil engineer. <laughs> I like to count things, uh, but, you know, it, it's, it's not going anywhere. It'll wait for you. It's all good. Yeah, exactly. Do you keep a list of your quotes? Yeah, I keep a list of everything. Um, <laughs> On a spreadsheet? Uh, no, not on a spreadsheet, generally just in a notebook. I should learn to put it in a spreadsheet, but, um, I tend to like, then when I close the computer, 
that's like separate. I, my husband is um, a software architect. So everything he does, his calendar, everything, everything is oh. in, is in the computer. And that's where he looks for it. it drives him bananas that I still like to write things down. <laughs> but there, the act, the act of actually writing it down helps like excavate yeah. it from me holding it in my head. And there's something right. that there's a connection. There's science behind it, but there's a connection right, to the too. writing process and where it's stored in memory. And right. so I, I still write things down because if so I don't, I'm like, do you use like a journal or is it just a regular notebook? I have a day planner. I don't have it here, but yeah, lots of notebooks, um, lots of lists. And sometimes the notebook is just the brain dump, you know, it's mm -hmm. just like to get the ideas out of my head and then I'll go back mm -hmm. and organize it into okay. something more um, coherent. <laughs> okay. But uh, I have a, um, it's an Aaron Condren just a stationary day plan day planner that I use very streamlined, not, mm -hmm. you know, one of those fancy ones with the stickers and the art and the, those are great, but mm -hmm. that's like a whole different, that's a whole different project. That's a whole different yeah. hobby. I'm like, no, I can, they get into. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I just need to make a list and mark mm -hmm. things off the list. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's just notebook paper. Okay. And that, that really drives everybody in the family crazy because then it gets everywhere because it's not contained. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, do you remember where I put my brain that was on the same <laughs> paper? <laughs> um, so what inspires you to start a particular quilt? How do you decide this one's the one I'm making? Um, that can vary. Sometimes it's a need. Sometimes I need to, you know, there's, there's a cause for a quilt, a baby quilt, but generally it's color. Generally it's about, you know, I see a color combination or like the Houston, I'm in Austin and the Houston quilt show was just here. Well, in Houston, that's in Texas, that's here. <laughs> did you go? Uh, I'm like, I did not go this year, but I went last year. And, okay. you know, you walk through and you see all these amazing quilts. And that's not the quilt I make. I am not a, you know, I don't have any burning desire to make a, you know, that kind of intense art art quilt for art's mm -hmm. sake. Um, I, I, I think quilting absolutely is art in any form, right? But I don't. But I like things. I like I like utilitarian things. Mm -hmm. But I get so inspired by color combinations or different block styles, and so I like file it all away, and it's bits and pieces. But generally, it's a spark. It's a spark from I see a pattern or I see. A color combination in nature I'm like oh I want to make something with that what can I what can I do with that or I have leftover I have leftover blocks from um usually somebody else's stash <laughs> but the start of a bunch of blocks and I'm like oh well what can we make with this what can we make with the leftover parts so I tend to work from that sometimes it's a pattern but even with a pattern, I'm like, okay, this is a good place to start. What what else are we gonna do? And um, and that can be as simple as changing the fabric requirements. You know, it's like, oh, it calls for X Y Z fat quarters and a background fabric. I'm like, well, okay, I'll pull whatever I need from my scraps and my stash, and my background color is gonna be this assortment of purples. <laughs> you know, or this assortment of things, uh, because I find yardage is not fun for me. Right. It's like, oh, you buy online, you have to buy yardage. Yeah. It's like, let's go, let's go buy, let's go buy five yards of background fabric. I'm like, yeah, let's just pull five yards of something, kind of, something that'll work. <laughs> I think that's so pretty anyway, when they have a variety of fabrics other than one anyway. Um, do you, are you a member of any guilds? You said you got some free fabric. So where do you get that from? I am a member. I'm a member of two guilds. I'm a member of the Austin area quilt guild, which is a, an all encompassing guild. 
but it's, um, you know, I guess it would be considered a traditional guild. But it, like I say, it's all encompassing and there's some really amazing, amazing quilters in there. And I'm also a member of the Austin Modern Quilt Guild. I'm a member of Sean's, um, Sean, the guy who sews his okay. online guild as well. And I just realized I missed the meeting last Sunday. Oh, well. <laughs> I'll catch the next one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had just gotten back from vacation, but of his online guild and he's doing some cool things. Um, you asked me another question. Oh, the free fabric. Uh, my Austin area guild has a free table and one of the, the volunteer coordinators, a friend of mine, she said, are you willing to run the free table again? I was like, yes, 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 I am. I will sit there and pick through all the free stuff first. I'll be glad <laughs> to. <laughs> I'll be glad to. Uh, so, you know, there's that. and But it's funny because I'm a member of two quilt bees as well. And once you tell people that you want scraps and you use scraps, they just like keep showing up. Mm -hmm. they just people are like oh I didn't want this and you take scraps right I'm like yeah I do and <laughs> so they just keep they just keep showing up and I have a designer friend Kareem Sobe who lives in the area and she posted I don't know I guess about a year ago she was like does anybody want these scraps and I jumped on it and like over the over the course of the year she's been like she is she has um streamlined like her process and so all the things that she had collected as a quilter uh she it doesn't have use for anymore because she designs now with solids and with different solids and so you know all of that stuff as she has cleaned out her storage storage areas and stuff uh, she'll call me up and say hey I've got like a carload of scraps which are not scraps it's just d-stash and do you want it I'm like yes yes i do right. when people <laughs> offer you free fabric you say yes you know if you can't use it i pass it on to the um we have a place here called austin creative reuse which is a it's like a junker's dream but it's where you can take different you know things you're not going to use in teacher supplies or crafty things and it's a cons not consignment, but like a craft thrift store. Essentially, like, it's like a crafter's goodwill. Yeah, oh, it's, it's a, a great place. place to go to. <laughs> it's a really great place, also because um, Fat Quarter Shop they're headquartered here in Texas, just uh -huh. down in Buda, which is uh -huh. a, you know thirty minutes south of Austin, and all of their scrap they donate to oh, wow. Austin Creative Reuse. Or a uh -huh. lot of it. And so, uh -huh. like, after they cut all the kits for something, I'm like, I'm going to give that about six weeks. And then I'm going to go to Austin Creative Reuse and buy all the Lori Holt fabric I want for 50 cents uh -huh. a, a quarter yard. That's yeah. a great price. <laughs> <laughs> so. It's brand new fabric, too, not even new. It is. It is. And I like, and I, I like the weird stuff. You know, mm -hmm. I like to... The stuff that people have dug out, they're like, I don't know. This, I started this back in, I don't know, 10 years ago, and it's half finished. Or I found this in my aunt or grandmother's sewing room, and I don't know. It's it's a project half started. I'm like, yes, let me start there. <laughs> let me find that. Because connection, like that connection to someone else's ideas, to someone else's thought process, it's like, it's like you're peeking into their life, and that's exciting to me. You know, I like the connection that quilting brings both to the maker and to history, but also to, you know, the person you give a quilt to or make a quilt for. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then their quilt has their stories built into it about how, oh, this person made this and gave this to me, but now it's special because it's been through all these things with me. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I like, I like. I like the stories that quilts tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the connection as well. I have um, a connection thing when I do with connecting all of my quilts together. So I try mm -hmm. to use a scrap from one quilt to the next quilt. 
Oh, that's an exciting process. Yeah. That's so fascinating. Each, each of my quilts has a relationship to some other of my quilt. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see what else do I have for you. I had had a question about serendipity. Uh, you have on your blog trail, you were talking about serendipity. And the mm -hmm. first time I'd heard about serendipity as it relates to quilting is from Gwen Marston. She had talked about joining two similar fabrics to each other so that the shape would be identified in that way. So what do you mean by serendipity and how does that affect your quilting? Serendipity is like, you know, it's the, it's the answer to, well, it's a couple of things. It's the answer to what if, what if I do this? What if I put these two blocks together? What if I put, what if instead of five yards of white fabric for background, I use 32 different, you know, white ish scraps. What does it look like then? Um, what happens when, if I, this block isn't working out, what happens if I cut it in half and use parts of it or use it to start something else? But serendipity is also the, you know, it's it's what happens when Kareen call, uh, post, puts a post on the Facebook group for the Quilt Guild and says, does anybody want scraps? I say, yes, I do. And, you know, all of a sudden I've got, you know, boxes and boxes of fabric that I can both use myself and divide up and share with other people and put on the free table for other people in the guild to use or teach new quilters or make quilts for our charity drives. You know, it's, it's the, what happens when you say yes, mm -hmm. yeah, I like that. you know, so it's it's what happens when you say yes and you just leave things wide open mm -hmm. instead of thinking they have to be, oh, I have to go to the quilt store or I have to go online and order, you know, a collection or I want to make this pattern and it needs to be this way and I'm going to make it in the colors that are shown on it. And there's nothing wrong with any of those things. It's just I've been doing this long enough to know that's not what, I don't know, sparks like that intense fire about quilting for me. You know, I, I like, I, I like the questions. So I, I like to see, okay, well, what can I do if I step outside of that sort of path? That's great. And each additional fabric that you get does change the mood of your next quilt that you have going forward. Yeah. That's awesome. The quilt um, behind you is absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, that's one of my favorite ones as well. And it's also one of those serendipity things where I'm adding all sorts of different fabrics together and each, each addition, additional fabric that I use just completely changes the mood of the quilt. Right, and it informs your next choice. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, your sliding quilt system. That's one thing <laughs> that I really enjoy about your channel is the sliding quilt system. So That's, tell me about that. Is you it know, that system? it's it's not. It, uh, it's either, you. It started as my husband, and last time it was my son. Um, it would be my daughter, but uh, Anna's only five two, so that's not <laughs> that's a little harder. Um, my guys aren't that much taller, but they're enough. So, no, I started that just because I needed I needed to show a quilt, and I was like, "Ha, huh, okay, here, Casey, can you just do this for me?" He's like, "Sure, I can," and it made me laugh so hard. I don't know why it tickles me, but it just did. And then I got so many comments about it, and somebody. One of the commenters said, I love your sliding quilt system. You're, you should patent that. And, and it just stuck. And so now I'm like, oh, no, we're doing it that way every single time. Because, <laughs> because it's just funny. And, I mean, if it's not fun, you know, why bother doing it, right? You know, right. This, is, this is supposed to be joyful. And sometimes, sometimes it can be stressful if you have a deadline or if you have something that's not quite working. But 
there there's even joy in you know sort of the race of a deadline mm-hmm. um so long as you're not like harming you know yourself or other aspects of your life for that but and there's joy in the you know sort of the solving the problem that you're up against with a quilt that you're stuck on you know there's joy in that that sort of creative work but if there's not joy in it then I mean you're just you're just selling you're binding up a lot of bad energy (laughs) into into that quilt and when you get done with it you're gonna feel it you're gonna be like oh oh." and if you give it to somebody you know they're they're gonna feel that from you and I'm not I'm not super you know I'm not super uh religious or spiritual as far as that goes but it's you you can see it you know you can sense that there's not joy in something Mm -hmm. and I don't I don't want I don't want quilting to be that. And so when it isn't, I walk away for a while. <laughs> right. Well, it's a hobby. So there, you shouldn't have to do it if it's not, doesn't yeah. bring you that joy that you expect. You said that you uh, taught guilds. What kinds of classes did you teach? Uh, anything we needed. I was the workshop coordinator for a very small guild in um, Silver Comet Stitchers. Hi, Silver Comet Stitchers. <laughs> in Powder Springs, Georgia, which is a suburb of Atlanta. And so if we needed something taught, I would be like, okay, what do, what do I know about this? <laughs> what can I blab about for 30 minutes about this? And I would just figure it out. The, the biggest one I did, and one of my favorites to give was about time efficiency, and about mm-hmm. how to think about time in a different way. That's another thing that I was raised, my dad owned his own business from the mid 80s until he retired in the uh, early 2000s. And um, he, so he was always listening to, uh, at the time it was, you know, books on tape because he did a lot of driving and we still had cassette players in cars. And, and, I, and now I feel the need to explain what a cassette is to some people, but... Mm-hmm. <laughs> every day every day I feel it I'm like oh I'm older every day um, <laughs> but time about time management and business practices my dad would listen to these um, you know audiobooks and courses on on tape and I would ride along with them a lot of the times especially during the summer because I love to be on the job site and so I've been listening to this stuff about you know from Stephen Covey and, you know, the book Atomic Habits is very popular right now. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, man, I've been listening to these principles since like before this guy was born. Um, (laughs) So I, 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 but I mean, it's, you know, it's always interesting. It fascinates me to hear like new iterations of it and new iterations of time and what, how to, sort of apply and succeed at what at whatever you're doing and how to break down your process mm-hmm. such that you can be um, very efficient with time. And I have chronic pain. I have extreme osteoarthritis in my left hip and it needs to be replaced. I'm doing um, what they call prehab right now. And they need me to do that for six months before they can do the surgery. And, um, but I've, dealt with chronic pain for the past, well, for a long time, but really like debilitatingly in the past five years or so. So time efficiency is -hmm. extremely important to me because I can't sit for a long period of time. I can't sit in one position for a long period of time. I can't stand and cut. I took my long arm down for about six months because I I couldn't stand at it. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. And I thought I wasn't going to be able to do it anymore. And then we set it up in another room smaller. And Mm -hmm. I have employed the help of both of my adult children in wrangling the, you know, in loading and unloading and, you know, doing some of that. And I'm teaching Anna to use the long arm so that hopefully they'll do it. And I I can finish more. (laughs) But so 
time efficiency is something that I really um, have spent a great deal of thought mm. in because it makes me be able to function. Right, right. Yeah. That's wonderful that your family is willing to help you with that. Oh, willing, they, willing, willing well, for you. money. <laughs> 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 yeah, an extra bonus helps a lot. Yeah, what? I'm sorry, you at you said you asked me something about oh, about whether your kids. kids do other quilting. Other types oh of no, they no computers, computer games. Yeah. Anna does a lot of digital art, mm -hmm. and um, she is. I can't think of a um. She's a maker, but um, she is in ball jointed dolls. There's a whole, um, I don't know, genre is not the, not the word I'm trying to find, but it's not going to come. But there's a whole group of people that do these art dolls and they, you know, fashion wigs for them and accessories and clothes, handmade clothes with like elaborate stuff. And mm -hmm. the dolls are made by artists and then they make them, you know, they create them in small batches. So they're kind of pricey. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, so she, they really enjoy spending time, you know, creating designs and outfits for that and a lot of costuming. So sewing, but not necessarily quilting. Right. Um, right. Okay. And Toby, Toby, no, he's just like video games and you know school. They're 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 gonna start school here in January, and um, they're both excited about it. <laughs> no, they sort of are, but they're like, oh, there'll be bounds on my time again. So <laughs> <laughs> it is hard oh. to go to school or change change uh, change modes. Like yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions that I forgot to ask you or anything else you want to tell my viewers? Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I feel like I, I feel like I talk about myself a lot, <laughs> but you know, I mean, the point of this interview when, when they ask me, when they ask me to do something at Guild, I was uh, a workshop direct coordinate. I don't know. I, um, I was on the board of the Austin Area Guild for workshops and they would stand up and say, is anybody here for the workshop report? And I would stand up and I'd be like, it's the Amy show. It's my favorite show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of, sort of a ham in that way, but um, I don't know. Like I said, I've been doing this for, um, uh, a long time and I still find it fascinating mm -hmm. I still find it fascinating there's always something to learn what I love so much right now is that you know there are so many ideas crashing together like mm -hmm. I said you know it was you know here's your template <laughs> <laughs> this is when I started. Here's your template. Now you're gonna trace it and make your quarter inch seam, and press it and pre oh pre wash your fabric base. Mm. Haven't done that in a long time, and um you know and then the modern the modern quilters came in and um the only thing really new that they were doing was they were organized about it. You know. I always got tickled back in the back in the early days when they're like, we're doing something new. I'm like, oh, here's this book published in 1971 <laughs> that is the same thing you're doing, sweetie, but okay. <laughs> and you know, maybe that's maybe that's uh, you know, being a little bit snide, but it's just none of us do anything new. You right. know, we all do things that are creative. But a lot of younger people don't know about that, right? So there was this denim um, cathedral windows quilt. I don't know if you know yeah. about that. It's basically yep. circles and you cut a square around it. Mm -hmm. And a pattern was recently produced. And it was just like, yeah, I made a quilt like that 20 years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, none of us do anything new. Now, your take on it, how do you teach it? 
the way, you know, the, the materials you use to do it, maybe those are new or maybe they're just new to you. Mm-hmm. But, I, it, you know, there was such an adversarial air during that time. And then, you know, it sort of calmed down and it was still, but there was still the, no, I'm a traditional quilter. No, I'm a modern quilter. And then the whole modern quilting is like this whole list of things. I was like, mm, okay. Um, I tend to I mean, I, the I, things I, that I do are like between this the boxes. So, right. um, I was rejected from the liberal liberated quilt guild, and also I can't do the modern quilt guild. So, or the traditional or the crazy quilt. I I do all of that kind of quilting, but I don't fit in any of the boxes just because there's something not quite. I right. love I love that now mm-hmm. I see the lines blurring mm-hmm. more and more. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the the quote con has the maximalist uh category this year and they have the what do they call it, modern traditionalism. I'm like, okay, I don't want to put a label on things. I understand for a quilt show you have to have, you know, categories. Mm-hmm. But I love how the lines are blurring in the identity arena because like I said Mm -hmm. you know I'm a quilter it's all quilting Mm -hmm. and it's all good and there's room for all of it Mm -hmm. and you know I I like I like that I'm seeing more you know and it's not just the fabrics it's not just oh I made a traditional quilt with contemporary fabrics that always happens um Mm -hmm. it's I made this quilt that is, you know, that it, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit anywhere. Mm-hmm. And that's what I like. It's like, okay, I like the parts that, you know, they don't fit, but you still look at it and you go, that's amazing. Right. You know, you can't, you can't put it any one place because it's unnecessary. Mm-hmm. It's unnecessary to categorize and label and separate us from one another you know I think that's sort of I think that's I guess the antithesis of my what what I really love about quilting is like when you so rigidly define something Mm -hmm. it separates it from anything else and what I love so much about quilting is that it connects you to everything else I agree Oh. Yeah, it helps to bring every everything together, people and different their different ideas and and riff off of that. Yeah, definitely. How can viewers get a hold of you if they need to contact you? I am on Instagram. My Instagram is because I didn't jump on it when Instagram first started. Um, is at e m a d e e m a y d e. That's okay. a nickname from. A million years ago, <laughs> but that that's my Instagram. That's a good place. And my um, email is creative genius at the demence.com. That's usually linked down below in my videos and my channel is just my name. It's Amy Dement. I wanted people to know how to find me. You know, I've done a lot of um, like small guild lectures and a lot of teaching and different things. And, you know, also came up through quilting through the blogging days. So it's uh, a lot of times it would be like, oh, I'm, you know, you're trying to find something or a pattern by a certain person. You're like, oh, well, that's and you their blog handle. And I, I just wanted to eliminate any confusion. So I just left it as my name. Yeah, that makes it nice and clear. Thank you so very much, Amy, for talking to me. Um, Thank you. And it's been hopefully- a delight. And if you want to check out our channel, I'll leave the information in the description box below. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all of your support. I'm hoping to have other conversations with other quilters that I can share with you. Um, So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, so you don't miss any of them.